Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here for Renaissance Periodization, Nutrition Myths number eight, Keto Burns More Fat. Boy, did we wade into controversy with this one. Let's talk about the claim, reasons why it's wrong, some silver lining to it, and then ways to move forward to actually make sense of the stuff. Here's the claim. Claim number one, the high fat intake of keto diets teaches you somehow, teaches your body to burn more fat for fuel. And by doing this, keto puts your body into a special fat burning state. And thus, keto burns more fat than other comparable diets with the same calories. Those are basically the three kind of interlocking claims. Now, here's why these claims are wrong. Your body does in fact burn more fat when you're on keto because you're eating more fat and it's burning the fat that you're eating and it's not burning any extra body fat whatsoever that we wouldn't predict by calories, plain and simple. Okay. Second point, the generation and metabolism of ketones, because keto people are obsessed with ketosis. My ketosis, they get keto strips. Ketosis offers no special net fat burning results whatsoever. It just doesn't enhance fat burning in any magical way. So if you're doing a keto diet and you're in ketosis versus not in ketosis, it doesn't matter for fat loss at all. In a direct sense, at the very least, we'll get to some indirect stuff in a bit. Detailed laboratory studies have been conducted on keto diets and regular diets for a generation. When the calories are equated, it doesn't matter how many of them come from protein and carbs and fats and so on and so forth, the amount of weight you lose is basically the same no matter where your macros come from. If the calories are the same and the magnitude of the deficit is the same. If you eat a decent amount of protein in both diets that are high fat and low fat, high carb versus low carb, then you actually conserve just about the same amount of muscle, probably a little bit more even in the not uh, super high fat diets, but I get ahead of myself. So once you eat a higher protein diet, whether or not you cut your calories a bunch from fats, which is not keto because you have a lot left for carbs, or you go keto and you leave a ton of fats in, but very few carbs, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Almost the entire difference doesn't exist. You burn pretty much the same amount of fat and lose the same amount of weight, no matter which one you're on, okay? Calorie deficit is the key. And if you generate a calorie deficit by slicing a bunch of your carbs away, sweet, it works. If you generate a calorie deficit by slicing away a bunch of your fats, that works too, just the same way. Now, there are some silver linings with keto because, you know, a lot of people do keto and they do observe and sometimes get really good results. And it's not just an illusion. Here's the deal. There's a couple things that are going on here. Not all people, but some people notice an appreciable reduction of appetite through a couple of different pathways when they do keto. They're just not as hungry, especially after a few days or a few weeks. And that causes them to eat fewer calories than they otherwise would or causes them to cheat less than they otherwise would. And then they lose more weight. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of times what people do is they don't track their calories nearly as much as they'd like to believe. They sort of just eat stuff. And when they go to keto, the amount of tasty things you can eat radically falls off the map because almost all of the favorite cheat foods that you have, almost all the snackable foods that you love that cause you to overeat, they're not fucking keto. They have carbs and fats in them. And if you cut out carbs almost entirely, man, like, you know, goldfish snacks are gone. I don't even know what the point of life is at that point. Potato chips are, are gone. Ice cream is gone. You guys ever try keto ice cream? It's not the same. Burgers are gone. Because who eats a burger with no bun? How much of that are you going to crave? Not much. Fries, pizza, pasta. There's all the foods that people overeat gone because they're not keto. So that's another big help. Some people get a sense of mental calm when they're doing keto, which coupled with the reduction in appetite can make it a really sustainable diet, at least in the medium term for them. And once they in the keto groove, they're going, they're just, they're not, they don't have the ups and downs of super high carb intake and weird mood stuff as some people do experience. And then they're just good and their adherence is really good. They stick to that calorie deficit and then they get really great results. And they'll say, oh my God, I'm getting great results because of keto. It's like, eh, keto lets you do the calorie deficit, which is what's actually getting you the great results, right? And because of this, lots of people lose a lot of fat and a lot of weight. And then they think keto is this magical thing. And they're wrong. 
is it's not a magical thing, but sometimes it's effective for some people, especially on an adherence side. So best practices, what do we do? What do we take away from this? First of all, if you want to lose fat, you absolutely can do keto. There's not a damn thing wrong with it. Unless you're an athlete and you're interested in maximum muscularity, maximum sport performance, carbs just beat fats almost every single time. So high carb diets are a really good idea then. But if you're just a regular person who just wants to lose weight, lose fat, keto is totally cool. Any other healthy diet that controls calories and eats, feeds you mostly healthy foods is also just fine. Yeah, there's nothing magical about keto. If you do keto and you try it, because some people try keto over and over and they fail at it and they don't know why. Some people try keto over and over and they get tons of success. If you are going to be trying keto, it should be because you get consistent results from it via easier adherence. If you're the kind of person that's like, dude, every time I do keto, I lose like 15 pounds in three months. It's awesome. I come back. I only gain five pounds. So over the couple of years, I've lost like 30 or 40 pounds doing keto every now and again and then coming back to a healthy diet. Like, dude, you're the man. Keep keep doing it. But for every person like that, there's like three people that are like, oh, I'm trying keto again. It's so tough. I hate it. It just makes me binge. If I don't go without carbs for three or four days, I freak out and I just want all the carbs in the world. Well, stop doing that. It's literally the only benefit of keto is if it enhances your adherence. And if it's decreasing your adherence, it's only a cost. It's the biggest cost in the world. Stop trying. But the reason people keep trying is people keep telling them keto is magic. It magically burns fat. You got to try it. And they're like, okay, I'll try it for the fifth time. It never works for me, but I'll try it. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. All right? At the end of the day, in all of the diets that you select, stop looking for magic because it's not real. It doesn't exist. There's no fat burning furnace bullshit. Your body's not going to like switch its metabolism some weird way. And all of a sudden you're eating all these tasty, great foods. You're not hungry anymore. And you're burning fat. It just doesn't happen. Right? So if you're looking for this diet, like, Ooh, I could just cut my calories into healthy foods, but I want the super crazy edge. What if I eat only this kind of food or that kind of food? You're looking for nowhere. Nothing in nowhere is going to help you. So cut it out. Stick to the basics. And if you're going to do keto, think long-term, right? Keto can be great, but you're probably not going to do keto for the rest of your life unless you're a joyless asshole who hates carbs and good things. Redundant, because that's the same thing. After you're done doing keto, if keto works well for you, have a plan to slowly reintroduce carbohydrates, starting with more veggies, then leading into more fruits, perhaps fresh fruits, then into some whole grains, and then all of a sudden you've lost all the weight you needed to from keto or whatever you did for that phase. You're reintroducing normal, good, healthy foods. You don't just... Don't go from keto to like Swedish fish candy. Then you'll overeat and you'll be bloated and you'll be miserable. Slowly increase with low glycemic vegetable-based carbs first, then fruits, and after a few weeks, some whole grains, and then regular grains, and then you're back to being a normal person and you've transitioned, your metabolism has healed, your psychology is healed, you're not feeling restricted anymore, and then you've lost all that weight and you've kept it off. Keto is a powerful tool for some people. It is not a magic tool, and make sure it is a powerful tool for you. If it works, use it, transition intelligently. If it doesn't work for you to enhance your adherence and if it makes your adherence to diets worse, stop using it because you can continue on in life without being a magical fat burning furnace, I promise. Folks, see you next time for the next diet myth.